In today's lesson, we want to talk about solving absolute value inequalities and equations. So what we're going to look at first is how do you solve absolute value equations? To solve absolute value equations, what you want to do here is first remind ourselves of the definition of the absolute value. Recall that the absolute value of x is defined to be either it's going to output an x, i.e. output itself, if the input here is greater than or equal to zero. If that input is a negative number, then the absolute value of x is defined to be negative x. So let's take a look here at our absolute value equation. The first thing you want to do is identify when the value inside of our absolute value function will be 0. So in this case here, if I let x be 7, we can see we'd be taking the absolute value of 0. We then want to draw ourselves a number line. On this number line, we want to mark the value of 7. When x equals to 7, as we just discussed, the, this will be the absolute value of 0. So what we want to do now is pick a number in the interval greater than 7. Any number in this interval will be the absolute value of a positive number. And therefore, when we take the absolute value of it, we just have to drop the absolute value sign and everything else is left unchanged. So therefore, this becomes x minus 7 equals 5. And notice here again, I can drop that absolute value sign because any value I choose in this interval will end up being the absolute value of a positive expression. And therefore, by definition of absolute value, we can drop that absolute value sign. Now, the same is not true for this interval. Any number we choose less than 7 will result in the absolute value of a negative number. For us to drop the absolute value sign, you can see by definition, to drop the absolute value sign, we must multiply the input by a minus sign. So on this side of the equation, it becomes negative in brackets, x minus 7 equals 5. Therefore, what we need to do now to solve our absolute value equation is to solve the following two equations, which will yield us two different answers. Solving for x on the right-hand side, we get x is 12. Taking a look at solving the equation on the left-hand side, we get x minus 7 is negative 5, in which case here x is 2. Therefore, the solution to this absolute value equation is going to be 2 and 12. Please review the basic strategy. The strategy is again to find out when the input of the absolute value is zero. Make note of that on your number line. Partition your number line up and then again to the right of, in this case, seven, any value was positive. Therefore, we could drop the absolute value symbol and just solve this equation. To the left of seven, any input into the absolute value sign will result in a negative value, in which case we can drop that absolute value sign, but it'll cost us a minus sign in front, again, by definition of absolute value. And then we just solve the two equations, and that becomes our solution set. Notice here we can do a quick check by subbing these in to our original equation to see if it satisfies. Doing a quick check here, you can see when I let x equals 2 and I sub that in, we get uh, left-hand side equals right-hand side. And likewise, when I let x equals 12, the same thing will happen here, left side equals right side. Let's look at another example of solving absolute value equations. For the next absolute value equation, we want to go through the same process. First of all, when is what's inside the absolute value going to be 0? That's going to happen here when x equals 5 fourths. So let's label 5 over 4 on our number line. So now we pick a number in this interval. Any number we pick in this interval will result in the input of our absolute value being positive. Therefore, by definition of absolute value, I can simply drop the absolute value symbol and solve the following equation. Solving the following equation here, we get 3x equals 6, or x is equal to 2. One thing you should check when you're solving these equations is you want to make sure that your answer is actually within the interval that you're working with. On some occasions, you can be set with a situation where your answer, in this case 2, is not within this interval. You'll notice here that um, 5 over 4 is less than 2, so we know that 2 is within this interval. It's good. But you should always check to see whether your answer actually lies in the interval. If it does not, then we would omit that. Now on the left-hand side of 5 over 4, now any input value we choose inside of the absolute value will be negative. So we can then multiply it by a minus sign. Uh, then I'm solving the absolute value equation, so I can multiply across by um, negative 1. Go ahead and solving this here, I end up getting 5x equals 4. And solving this here, I get x equals 4 over 5. So you'll notice here, once again, 4 over 5 is within this interval. And we have our two answers to this absolute value equation. For the next example here, it's a little bit different. You'll see we have multiple absolute value signs. Well, luckily, not much is changed regarding this. Again, we draw our number line. You want to identify when is your absolute value uh, going to be 0. So this will be 0 
when x equals negative 3 halves, and this will be 0 when x equals 0. So we have uh, negative 3 halves as a point of interest and 0 as a point of interest. So now what we have here is we partitioned our number line into three uh, intervals. So for example here, if I pick a number greater than 0 here, the input here will always be positive. So we can drop the absolute value sign on this absolute value. Likewise, anything greater than 0 here, we can also drop the absolute value. So we just have to solve the following equation, 2x plus 3 equals x plus 8. Solving for x here, we get x equals 5. Notice here that your value of x equals 5 is within this interval, so this solution is admissible. Now let's take a look at something in this interval here. Notice if I substitute in, let's say we have a negative 1 lies within this interval. If I substitute a negative 1 to here, the result will be positive. Therefore, we can drop the absolute value sign on the equation. However, if I sub a negative 1 into here, the result will be negative. So we can drop that absolute value sign. However, that will cost us a minus sign out in front, and then we have our plus 8. So now solving this equation here will give us our answer within this interval. So solving this equation, we get 3x equals 5, and I'm getting here x equals 5 thirds. Now make the following observation here. Um, when x equals 5 thirds is not inside of this interval. So because that is not inside this interval, this solution is inadmissible, and we're going to exclude that from our answer. Continuing on here, moving to the left-hand side here, pick a number within this interval. Any number we choose within this interval will result in the input being negative here and being negative here. Therefore, we have to put a minus sign on both of these equations. Doing so, we get... Now I want to solve this equation right here. So again, solving this equation right here, we get negative 2x minus 3 uh, is negative x plus 8. And solving this, we get negative x equals 11, and I'm getting x equals negative 11 as my solution to this one. And you'll notice here that x equals negative 11 is within this interval here. So therefore, the answer to this equation of absolute values is going to be two values here. We've got negative 11 and 5. Again, let's do a quick check here. We'll sub these in and verify that this is, in fact, a solution. So taking a look here, we took the value of x equals negative 11, and I can verify here left-hand side equals right-hand side, and likewise, I took the value of x equals 5. And again, I show left-hand side equals right-hand side. So we can see here that um, both our solutions were, in fact, correct solutions to our absolute value equation. So now we're going to move on and take a look at absolute value inequalities. To solve absolute value inequalities, the same strategy is going to be employed. What we're going to do here is take a look at, okay, when is the input going to be 0? Well, that's going to happen at negative 3 over 2. So draw yourself your number line, and then make note of negative 3 over 2. Now, as I pick any value in this interval here, and I were to substitute it in, you can see that the absolute value would be positive. We'd be inputting a positive on our absolute value here. So therefore, what we can do is we can drop our absolute value symbol, and I can solve the following inequality, right? So again, because the input value here will result in the absolute value um, acting on a positive value, we can drop the absolute value symbol without having to put the minus sign down. Now we solve this inequality. So solving this inequality here, we have 2x is less than or equal to 6. x is less than or equal to 3. So a couple things you got to check here. First, you have to make sure that this solution is within the interval, and you can see here it is. Uh, x is less than or equal to 3. Uh, you know, we'll start maybe somewhere here, and then it'll continue on until we hit negative 3 halves. So therefore, the answer on the right-hand side of our number line is going to be square bracket negative 3 over 2 until we hit 3. And again, I put a square bracket on that because we have equality there. Now, moving on to the left-hand side of our number line, we can see any value that we substitute in here will result in the absolute value acting on a negative value. Therefore, I can drop the absolute value symbol, but it'll cost me a minus sign. And therefore, we're going to solve the following linear inequality. Multiply across by uh, negative 1. Uh, don't forget to change the direction of the inequality when you do so. Um, continuing this on here, we get uh, negative 12, and x is greater than or equal to negative 6. So once again, uh, negative 6 is within this interval. So the answer on the left-hand side of the number line will go from square bracket negative 6, again, until we hit that negative 3 over 2. So again, putting these both together here, Putting this interval together with this interval, we have our complete solution set.
for this inequality. So the answer here, you can see it's all connected. It's going to go from square bracket negative 6 to 3 square bracket. So solving this absolute value inequality, this will hold as long as x is within this interval. Let's take a look at another example of solving absolute value inequalities. So same idea with this question here. We want to discover when is that absolute value going to be 0. So in this case here, if I let x be negative 3 quarters, we will be taking the absolute value of 0. So mark this as negative 3 quarters. And now again, pick anything to the right of our absolute value. You can see that the input value will be positive. So I can solve this inequality. I just have to drop the absolute value symbol. Subtracting off 3 quarters, we get x is less than minus 2 over 4, which is equal to minus 1 half. And therefore, within this interval, we have x is less than minus 1 over half. Now notice here, negative a half is actually greater than uh, negative 3 quarters. So therefore, within this interval here, the answer will be from negative 3 quarters, square bracket, until we hit minus a half. And again, I'm going to put an open bracket on that minus a half because we do not have strict equality on that. So we want to exclude uh, that endpoint of minus a half here. That's why I have open bracket here. Now, on the left-hand side of the inequality here, we're going to go ahead and I can drop that absolute value sign, but it's going to cost you a minus sign in front. And then I want to go ahead and solve this one here. Um, again, we're going to multiply across by a minus sign here, and that'll change that direction of that inequality. Then we're going to subtract 3 over 4 from both sides, in which case we're going to end up getting negative 1. And therefore, x is greater than negative 1 is within this interval here. So we can see here, if I'm looking at x is greater than negative 1, the answer to this will go from negative 1 to minus 3 quarters square bracket. So again, I'm including the 3 quarters. We included it here, so you don't actually have to include it in both spots. But when we put this together, negative 3 quarters will be included in our answer key. Um, and again, here I have strictly greater than minus 1 here. So that's why we have the open bracket here. So again, putting these all together here, we have our answer. My answer goes from negative 1 to minus 1 half open bracket. Let's take a look at the next absolute value inequality. For the next absolute value inequality, same idea. What we want to do here is we want to go ahead and find out when is the absolute value of this acting on 0. So again, draw your number line. And this happens at negative 8 over 5. Pick a value to the right of negative 8 over 5, and you can see here that that absolute value will be positive. So therefore, I can solve this absolute value inequality by dropping the absolute value symbol. And we're essentially solving this linear inequality now. Uh, add 3x to both sides and go ahead and subtract 8 to both sides and divide this across and you end up getting x is less than or equal to minus 1 half. So therefore, um, when x is less than or equal to minus 1 half, um, any value within this interval will satisfy this inequality. So again, our answer key is going to go from, I'm going to put square brackets on that, negative 8 over 5, going all the way up to minus 1 half. And because we have equality here, we're going to put a square bracket on that as well. Moving on to the left-hand side here, same idea. Now, any value we choose inside of here will be negative. So I can drop that absolute value symbol, but I have to put a minus sign in front. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply across by minus 1. Doing so, I have to switch that inequality and distribute that minus sign. Subtracting 3x to both sides, you get 2x is greater than or equal to negative 12. And x is greater than or equal to negative 6. So again, negative x is greater than or equal to negative 6 is within this interval here. So putting this together here, we have square bracket, negative 6, until again we hit that negative 8 fifths. Uh, I'll put the square bracket on that. And again, you don't have to put the square bracket on the negative 8 fifths both times, but the point being is when you put this together, negative 8 fifths is part of your answer key. So the answer to this is going to go negative 6, square bracket, until we hit minus 1 half. So therefore, any value between negative 6 and minus 1 half will satisfy the following inequality. Let's take a look at another example involving absolute value inequalities. For our final example using absolute value inequalities, the same idea here. Now we have multiple ones. So again, we're going to identify when is that absolute value going to be 0. That's going to happen at 0 and 3. So label this at 0 and at 3. And now what we're going to do here is pick a value greater than 3. So let's say uh, we pick a 10 or something like that. If I were to sub a number in this interval here, this will be positive, And likewise, this will be positive. Therefore, I can drop the absolute value symbol and uh, just write it as is and solve the following equation. Now, solving this inequality here, we can distribute the x. You get x minus x plus 3 is less than 7. And I'm getting here 3 is less than 7. 
Now, if you think about that, what does that mean? Well, what that means here is that is 3 less than 7? That is a true statement. So 3 is less than 7. What that means is that every single value within this interval satisfies this inequality. So therefore, the solution on this interval here will go from square bracket 3 to infinity. Now pick a value between 0 and 3. Let's suppose I picked a value of 1. This will be positive and this will be negative. Therefore, um, the absolute value of x, we can just drop that absolute value sign with no cost. And for absolute value of x minus 3, we must add a minus sign. And therefore, these two minuses will, will become positive. So therefore, we're solving the following absolute value inequality. You can see here, if I solve for x here, this becomes 2x minus 3 is less than 7, in which case 2x is less than 10, and x is less than 5. So therefore, within this interval here, we have x is less than 5. Now, x is less than 5 is all the way here. So we're, they're saying we're going all the way down here. So you, again, you must intersect that set, and you can only work within the interval that you're choosing. So therefore... If it has x is less than 5, that means that this is satisfied everywhere within this interval as well. So the answer here will go from square bracket 0 to square bracket 3. And lastly, we're going to pick a number in this interval. Picking a number in this interval, this will be negative, and this will be negative as well. And therefore, we're going to have to put a minus sign in front of each of these expressions to drop the absolute value. Doing so, we get... You can see as I go to solve this absolute value... You can see as I go to solve this inequality, the x's will cancel in this case, and I get negative 3 is less than 7. And now you ask yourself, is that a true statement? Well, yes, negative 3 is less than 7. So once again, that means that everything within this interval satisfies the absolute value inequality. So therefore, the answer here will go from negative infinity until we hit 0 square bracket. Now you can probably already see what's going to happen here. As I put all my answers together, 1, 2, and 3, the solution to this inequality is going to be all real numbers. And again, the reason that came about was because on the right-hand side, we ended up solving the inequality. We got a true statement. 3 is less than 7, in which case every value of x would satisfy it. On the extreme left-hand side here, we got negative 3 is less than 7. Again, another true statement. Therefore, everything on the left-hand side of this uh, number line from 0 also satisfies the inequality. Between those values here, we went to go solve, and I got x is less than 5. Well, x is less than 5 within this interval will contain all of 0 and 3. So putting that all together, we have our real number system as the solution to this absolute value inequality. That concludes today's lesson on solving absolute value inequalities. Thank you.